gonna start it all. All right, what's up, everybody? Day 184, make a song bringer. It's gonna be another new enemy day. Today's new enemy is gonna be a burrowing enemy. I'm just kind of getting my, my bearings here by running the game once to start with. Um, yesterday's enemy was this whole, um, this crab underneath a rock. So they look kind of like other rocks. You can get up next to the other rocks and you're like, mm, that's not a burrowing guy. But when you get really close to one, there's one and it activates. And they're kind of hard to beat because they got a lot of health. They can, and they're really fast. They're actually kind of interesting enemies. They fall apart. I really needed to make a, a rock cracking noise for that. So yeah, love them. I love these enemies. They're super cool. I think all these guys are them. Yeah. Ah. I just noticed. Yo, what's up? Ekloff. Did I, was I yelling? Is there yelling in the background? I'm not hearing it. Alex Pita. Yo. Yo, yo. Hello. Hello. What's up, Momir? Yo. So, yeah. Yesterday's enemy turned out good. I was just showing it there. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, and so, I, I figured out how to do um, these guys so I can't walk over them anymore. So, watch this. I can walk. I can't. I can walk around him, but I can't walk over him. What I did there was I added a, um, two different collision boxes. So one collision box is actually the regular size. And then the other collision box is actually a pixel bigger um, or smaller. So the, the static collision box, the one that you can't run over, is slightly smaller. And that allows the player to barely step on the, that guy. So what's up, Bruns, Bruns, Bruns Bear? Yo, welcome to the stream. So today I'll be making a, a burrowing type of enemy. And once again, I'm going to start off this this stream um, creating like a, uh, a gray box to represent this enemy. And I'm also going to name him X for now. Um, so feel free to, sh as, this, as this guy evolves and stuff like that, feel free to shout out ideas. Feel free to shout out ideas for his name, lore for him or whatever. So um, all I know is this is going to be a burrowing enemy. It'll it can go underground and reappear at other places. That's basically the whole concept of them. But as far as visually goes, I do have a kind of an idea. But if you have ideas visually too, please feel free to shout those out too. So we'll make this kind of a um, we'll work together on this, you know. Um, all right, yeah. So let's just start off with that gray square thinking usually 48 by 48 has been working pretty well for me that gives me plenty of room on the, around it to be able to um, streams lagging man sorry man I had some I don't know what it is but sometimes some people lag like crazy and oh it's for you too huh um, well it doesn't look like I have any drop frames right now and I know there's there's nothing else going on on my internet I'm the only only one using the internet right now so my, it means my girlfriend's not watching Netflix or anything, so we're good. We should be good. So it looks like it might be Twitch's end, <laughs> which I love to I love to blame Twitch. Okay, cool. So Eklov's not getting it, so that means it must be some kind of network thing or Twitch thing. So hopefully it clears up for you guys. Um, so if you weren't hearing what I was just saying there, I was just saying feel free to shout out ideas. Um, visual ideas, lore ideas, anything, concepts, whatever. So I'm going to start off with, once again, like a, a gray square. Just to represent this guy. Uh-huh, okay. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to call this guy X for now. Once again, feel free to shout out ideas for names or anything. So, put this guy in the common sprite sheet. 
and just call them X. Hermit, yeah, they're kind of hermit crabs. Ekloff was shouting out some ideas yesterday about it, and um, they got this slime type stuff that they uh, they emit. Um, that wait, what is it? What does the blue slime do again? Ekloff, Digda, that's kind of a cool name. Oh, Digda for this new guy, Digda. I like that. I like that so much. I think we might even use that name. Dig duh. Cool. Dig duh. Yeah, I'm really digging that name. In fact, you know what? We're going to go with that name. That's so cool. I like it. We might as well use that instead of calling and trying to name rename this guy later. But, you know, feel free. If anybody else wants to shout out ideas too, feel free to shout them out. And, you know, if there's a really awesome one that comes up, we can always change it later. Oh, oh, it's Pokemon? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. All right. Well, we can't use that. Yeah. I don't want to copy other games too much. I mean, there's some element of copying other games that's inherent in all game development. So I'm really not worried about that, but... As far as things that might be copyrighted or are obviously creations of other games, I can't quite use that. So, all uh, right. So yeah, we'll we'll think up a cooler name. Maybe something related to dig. I like this whole dig. The dig word works really well, of course, because he's a digging enemy. Oh, uh, yeah. 1 a.m. your time. I think it's really late for these guys, too. Ekloff's, Ekloff's in Sweden. Um, Alex Pita's in Italy. So they're, they're at least 1 a.m. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's get this guy created. Um, we, need, we need a behavior and we need a property list. I'm trying to think of what enemy this is sort of like. I guess he's kind of like the drop. This is kind of a default always. Or the blob. The blob would work too. Let's just do the let's copy the blob to start with. Alright, just kind of getting this whole property list started. This is these property lists I use to load up um, load up all the properties, animations, sprite sheets, sounds, and stuff like that for an enemy. Yeah, totally. That based on that other one? Yeah. Definitely like a worm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking in my head visually. Kind of a worm like enemy. Yes, 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 Bruns Bear, definitely. That's what the um that's what the the inspiration was to start that enemy from yesterday, yeah. Um the Stalfos, I think I believe they're called, but it's the inspiration comes from Zelda, the first Zelda, Legend of Zelda. But yeah, Zelda uses that kind of enemy in a lot of their games. So Okay, we got that. Let's get the property list or I mean the uh behavior Cool, we got a behavior. <laughs> ah, it's so funny. So funny. Oh, nice one. Nice one. <laughs> uh all right, yeah, so let's get this guy hooked up in the world, too. We're going to have a gray square before we know it. I 
thinking as far as I'm, I'm ordering these in order of difficulty. Like the blobs are really easy. The jitter is even kind of easy. Then the X, then the drolly, then the scratchu. <laughs> Alex Peter. Uh, moving platforms? No. I'm not I haven't really don't have plans for any moving platforms yet. But that's an interesting idea. I never really thought of it that way. I've always thought of those as sort of a um kind of more of a side scroller platformer type thing, but yeah, I never really thought about putting him in a roguelike game like this, or Zelda-like. What's up, Felix? Alright, and we're gonna do yeah, three, three to five of them to start, let's say. Okay, now I'm just gonna go run around the overworld and find a, a good area to test these guys out. In fact, the area we're right on right now might be a good one. We'll see. Okay, this area still got these guys. The crashews. All right, so what we're looking for is a big gray square. Collectible upgrades to the scores? Um, maybe, maybe. Um, there's that's it's a lot of work to do upgrades to the weapons because there's already so many animations um, for the sword. But um, yeah, so what I like to do is I like to put everything here. We go. Here's one with these guys. Let's save right here. Um, what I like to do is put those on an idea on the ideas list because. My plan for this game is to release it when it gets to the done state, right? Where it's when it's playable enough and stuff like that, and then keep on releasing free updates to the game. Um, this is gonna be on Steam, so on for it'll be on Steam for the first few months, and then it'll come on iOS, and then later it'll come on um, retro VGS and all that. But so that's a lot of time to refine the game and make it even better and better and better. So that might be one of the things I I do later is like more weapons or upgrades of the sword. Definitely, it's easy to do like actual attributes of the sword, like making the sword um, stronger. That's really easy. That does that doesn't require new art. So, yeah, yeah, the red hair guys, those are new. Yeah, that's from this week. So this week, actually, there's been several new enemies. There's um, there's the Drolit, those red haired guys. There's the Jitter, which is this jumping bug. There's the Kratchu, which was that, that crab with a rock on top of it. Um, and now we're making this burrowing guy. So that's four new enemies this week so far. <clears throat> Alright, let's see if we can find a, maybe a more interesting area to, to play with these guys on. Cause this is kind of this is kind of a really um, there's not really that much room on that area. This would be a good one. Actually, this one's so good. I'm gonna save it there. And I'll put, I'll force the the game to put these guys. No, I don't have a new mouse yet. <laughs> How can you tell my mouse is crazy? It's a bat. It's definitely it's hanging on by a thread. What's up, Teak? All right, cool. We got some of these new guys, the new X guys. I'm thinking they're a bit too big, so I need to reduce the proportion. And I also want to force them to be 
not faux entrance B, which is just like these other guys. Oh, right. I I had actually I've thought about this. I've thought about this a lot because I really am using Zelda One as inspiration. Um, and I I had first thought, no, where the heck is this? I didn't know there was a screen with these guys on it, and the and the side perspective. Well, this is totally different. This A and this B, yeah, this is somebody. Is this somebody's um? Oh, this is quest for Kalash, Kalashia. Crazy. I could see your future. I love it. I love it when people are doing their remixes of Zelda. It's so cool. Uh, that's why I definitely want to I want to leave this game to be really hackable. I want people to be able to easily hack this game into something else, but not quite be a mod. I want it to be Yeah, yeah. I totally I know the room. Yeah. The laser things for sure, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna add basically every single kind of enemy you find in the Legend of Zelda. I'm gonna do some kind of inspired enemy off of something like that at least, and then more enemies if possible if if I have time. So, oh yeah, okay. So let's um let's make this guy. Like that. So he'll start. Oh, let's do one more thing. Make him a little smaller. Yo, hey, Tappy, what's up? What's up, man? We're making enemy number four for the week. This is um, this is a burrowing enemy. All right, so we've got an area set up for this guy. We have just dialing in the proportions right now, and then we'll make this guy do some behavior, work on the behaviors, so he can actually burrow underground and then pop up somewhere else. And then I'll do the art. So I'm thinking he's a little bit too wide and not quite tall enough now. Oh, the wall master guy? Yeah. In the form of a laser beam. You actually never played Zelda? You mean the original Zelda or any of the Zeldas? Oh yeah, totally, right? Yeah, I was definitely thinking of something worm-like. Mole worms. You've never played any Zeldas, whoa. That's crazy to me. That's like somebody not seeing Star Wars or something like that, but I've, I've definitely heard of these. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> uh. So wait, okay, Teak. Okay, that's that's crazy. You have never played Zelda, but why have you never played Zelda? Is it just not your type of game, or you've been holding out, saving it for later? Yeah, I'm thinking about that size. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. The next thing to do is we make these guys so they can burrow. 
Um, and that I'm thinking is a pretty simple thing. They just go, what is Star Wars? Why does Coco Studio X use scope resolution operator so much? Because they scope everything in the Coco Studio X thing, right? So everything is Coco Studio Sprite or whatever. Um, but you can get around that by just doing using using namespace Coco's 2D, and then you don't have to type that. Yeah, Star Trek, Stargate. You only saw the first three Star Wars. You mean the old Star Wars? If you've only seen the only the old Star Wars, that's all you need to see, man. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I started playing um, Oracle of Season. I've heard there's a... You've never played Zelda either? What? Oh, you didn't like them. <laughs> you, uh, but you never tried them. Interesting. What, okay, so what is your kind of game then? What's your What's your thing? What's What excites you? What do you love to play? Both of you guys. Tappy too. What's your favorite kind of game to play, Tappy? Okay, burrowing. How am I going to get this guy to burrow? Basically, we need... A sequence sequence burrow like if rand something like every six six seconds or so hello pixel space welcome to the stream welcome 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 Daisy, Minecraft, World Tanks. What's what's Daisy? Oh, zombie game? Wait. No, not a zombie game? World Tanks, Minecraft. Cool. Right on. Okay, so I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a, some kind of sequence where this guy's going to burrow underground, and I'm trying to think of how to, how to do it. <clears throat> You play racers, first person shooters, MOBAs, FIFA, indie titles. Cool, man. I definitely love my, my personal favorite here is smaller indie titles. That's my favorite kind of game. But then yeah, I love I love um I love roguelikes or Zelda type games and Okay, so that's hardcore zombie survival. Nice. Ah, okay. That's right. Yeah, I, th I kind of got the feeling it was a zombie, but I didn't really see any zombies, so that's probably why. You'd recommend using a boolean for what? What you talking about? Oh, for the burrow. So what I'm, what I'm thinking here is this is how it's gonna kind of happen. Um, let's just. I can leave that. Yeah, that's fine. So these guys are going to walk around, right? At some point, they're going to decide, hey, I want to burrow, right? So when they want to burrow, what's going to happen is they need to turn off their their collision mask so you can't collide with them anymore. Because right now, you can collide with them and you can get hurt by them. But when they go underground, you don't want that. And also, they need to be invisible. So they basically, they they turn off their collision and go invisible and then they keep on moving, and then at some point they decided to come up, and they um, they turn back on their collision mask and make themselves visible again. So 
And then the rest is just all animations. So that's basically it. It just needs to turn off its uh, collision. Nice. Hey, what's up, Midnight? I haven't, I haven't seen Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. Is that the new one? The super great graphics one? Oh yeah, I think this one is. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's free. Wow. Cool. Why is the frog jumping so slow? Is he really? Let's see. Yes, yeah, I'm using Entity Foo. I'm I'm the one that created Entity Foo. So yeah. A state system? Um depends on what you mean by state system. What you, what do you mean exactly? Let's look at the frogs. I think they're Oh, it was just because he was jumping high. Oh wait, oh, you're right. That frog got stuck right there. Yeah, he got stuck again. Oh, I must have messed I must have messed something up when I did the new enemies. So, let me put that down on the bug list here. Frogs get stuck inside jump and then okay, I'll get to that later on. <laughs> I say that for so many things. State jump, state run. Uh no, I'm not using that kind of system. I'm using um I'm using a behavior tree, which is a lot different. And it puts all it basically instead of having to code all that or creating states or whatever, um it's all in data. This is entirely a script basically that runs the AI. So it's really, really awesome. At least for this game. Totally, it's Superman Frog. You can fly forever. So if ran 6.0, we would want to like animate Burrow, something like that, and then um, set the collision to nothing. I would, I, would, I would say maybe like collision mask, none, and then I wonder if I had already did that. I think I might have already done that. And then something like um, set a timer, hmm. I wish there was an easier way to do this, but what I would do is something like set a timer for whatever, four seconds, and then after that timer's up, so yeah, I guess this could work, unburrow, um, if timer end, animate, unburrow, Collision mask. Yes, they are really easy to edit on purpose. I want this game to be hackable. Very hackable. So I want people to be able to basically create their own mods or hacks or whatever they want and change everything. And I don't care that they can change the game and make it easier or whatever. That's their thing. They they bought the game. They can change it however the heck they want as far as I'm concerned. If they have... if most people are not even ever going to know that this is even here. Most people that play the game are never even going to be like, poke into the directory and try and change stuff. But to the people that do poke into the directory, I want them to be able to be like, oh my gosh, I'm hacking the game, this feels cool, and make their own changes and do whatever the heck they want. Yeah, the flies get eaten around him. So if a fly gets close to a frog, it gets eaten. Um, 
it should be in there. If that is not working, then that's crazy. But it might it might be like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Some people are some people already know how much they are gonna go poke around into these files. Um, collision mask. Okay, this is where we want to put the collision mask back to normal. So. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Right. The flies shouldn't try and, like, yeah, swarm around him. That's a really good point. It's a it's a minor detail type point, but um, I'm not sure how I would do that. Oh, well. I think the flies might naturally... Let's see, the fly... See, the, the flies target friends or foes. So I guess what I could do is make... Yeah, actually, what's going to happen here? This is going to work automatically. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Momir, I think this is automatically going to work. Because what's what this works off of right here, target, the target command works off of um, the actual type for their collision mask. So, or their category. Yeah, so all I really got to do is change their category, not their mask. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, good th good call. That's actually got this to be even better. So what this is going to be is like collision category none. And that'll make them, so they still have a collision box, but they don't actually collide with anything. And then once they're back, they're back and unburrowed, there'll be collision category foe. There. So that will basically make it so not only are they not c colliding with the player, but the flies won't even be interested in them either. Why am I not using Java or Python? Um, well, first of all, I'm more experienced with C++ than any other language. So I'm, this, C++ is my favorite language. Um, also, C++ is incredibly portable. So I'm, you, you can see from this game that it's going to be ported to a lot of different platforms. iOS is one of them. But Retro VGS is probably the most exciting one to me. And Retro VGS, that's going to be one of those platforms where it's going to be very good to be developing with C++ because it's so portable. So that's the main reason is its portability and also its speed. So And also, I'm, I have no experience whatsoever with Java, basically none. I've, all I've done is like tiny Android apps. And Python also, I've only done a f tiny few scripts. So, yeah. And, and I'm also very experienced with Cocos 2DX, which is a C++-based game engine. So um, when I started this game, I could have maybe switched to a different language or a game engine, but it probably would have taken me six months just to get used to the game engine and get used to how it worked and everything. So basically what I've done is I've saved myself six months by, not, by sticking with C++ and also sticking with Cocos 2DX. Okay, let's get let's make sure we have the words so we can parse these. I don't know if I have the word category, but I know I have the word collision in here. Okay, we don't have collision, so let's get that. Or we don't have category, so we want the word category, we want the word collision. I think that's really all we have to add is just the word category. So here we go, we got the word category we can parse now. And now we just gotta hook it up to the system. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put, yeah, put this into the system. So um, the AI, yeah, AI systems behave is where it can go and set up different, this is the whole behavior tree parsing right here, or running. This is the system for running behavior trees.
The custom build challenge? Whoa. I know I have a behavior collision already. I think this is if collision. Yeah, that's if. There's target. Oh, here's mask. Okay, mask actually. Ah, mask and unmask work on the move. So yeah, this will be very similar to this. Else if type equals k behavior category and we have um, at least two values right I think it was two values is it working like a lexer what's a lexer I'm not sure what that is uh, collision category none collision category foe right All right, so all we got to do here is parse out, um, parse the mass. So yeah, unsigned. It's a lot like this. Just unsigned category equals collision component parse mask stir val. Oh, we don't even need. Oh, we don't even need the word collision. That's right. So this X thing, we don't even need. Yeah. Just set that to category foe, and here is category none. Oh, and in fact, I want to make these animations at the end in case they're not able to do it. So, all right, uh, let's category. And then e dot collision dot category equals category. Wow, that's a super easy one. Oh, oh, okay. No worries. No worries. Um, okay, I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here just to make sure that even works. We're hitting this. We're hitting this breakpoint, and this is parsing correctly and all that. So we should hit it right a, roughly in a few seconds of running this. Cool, we got it. Oh, wait, no. Unrecognized behavior type category. That's really weird. You know, so I've seen this before, when it, but it actually wasn't related to the word category. It was because I animated something. So I'm going to try and turn off Animate Burrow for a second. Weird. Okay, I don't know. I'm not sure why this is actually failing an assertion here. Oh. Okay, so that I must have... Oh! Oh, oh, I, okay, what happened was it did parse the word category, um, but it didn't have the right number of values, so I should make that clear. There. Make that clear. So next time I'm not like, uh, what's why is this doing this? Basically, it didn't have the right number of values that it wanted, so I had I had reduced that phrase by one word. So that should work now.
All right, cool. We're hitting it. Let's see if it parsed it correctly. We got the word stir vowel one. Okay, no, I didn't parse. Didn't parse that word correctly. But it did have a subtype of pho. Okay, this is good to know. It's good to know that that actually parsed a little bit. So, friend, foe, these are words that behavior can parse. So, so we'll do a switch on the subtype. So, if we have behavior, foe, we don't have foe. Oh, there's behavior none. That's what it was hitting. It was hitting none. Yeah, there's no friend either. Okay, so we just need none and default. In fact, uh... None, nothing happens. Default is to parse whatever the heck it can find. See what happens this time. Uh, yeah, this should, this should work. So we'll watch this breakpoint, make sure it hits the category. And also when it, when it hits the category again, when it unburrows, it should set that to correctly. Yeah, category zero, subtype 121, I believe is K behavior none because it probably hit that. So let's run it again. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Okay, okay yeah, here's foe. So this should have parsed out category. Oh, category didn't work. Oh, because it's third valve zero. So that's really what I wanted to check there. All right, so this should all work now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get. A, I'm gonna get a drink of water. I'll be right back.
Yes, get some water. Agua. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is watch these guys. So I'm going to turn on drawing debug so we can see, see what their categories do and all that. Turn off this breakpoints. Hey yo, what's up, Code? Code blue. How do I stand for so long? I really don't stand that long. I'm I mostly just stand while I live stream. Um, cause uh, you know I used to stand a lot more. My last game I made, I stood stood most of the whole day. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you just get used to it. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> really? No way. So it's hard to tell whether this guy's burrowing or not so let's make it so it's really obvious we'll take this um property list and when he we'll give him the burrow and the unburrow animation so burrow sweet yeah i like it too i like interacting with you guys it's really fun because you know what i can't i can walk out the door right I bet we can all walk out our doors, and very few of us have actually. It's it's difficult to go to go meet someone that's a game developer, right? Just randomly. It's even more difficult to try and talk to just random people about game development. Nobody really knows or cares, you know, about programming and art and music and all the stuff that goes into making games. So it's really cool to be able to interact with you guys. Because we get it. All of everybody gets it here. They're like, oh, this is game development. This is what it is. And you're interested in it. I'm interested in it. It's cool to be able to interact like that. <laughs> that would be so rad. Be able to program in a handstand. I'd have to get a voice activated coding to work for that. That's my new life goal to be able to code upside down while doing a handstand. I can't even do a handstand right now, but um, one day. So Burrow, we're just gonna change his his ping file to empty, which is an empty ping file. Yo, what's up, Fung? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yep, I know what you mean. When I first started this, I actually looked at some other people's live streams. I was like, okay, how are they doing it and stuff like that, and I found that. I didn't really like the ones where they weren't talking or whether they were kind of grumpy. You know, there's a lot of people that are just super grumpy. Um, so, yeah, I learned a lot from watching other people stream for a minute. I decided, you know what, I don't want to be like that. I want to be like this. Okay, so when he unburrows, we'll set his back to X. So that should make him invisible. Oh, yeah, that could probably happen too. Yeah, I know. I you know what? I've even I've I've dealt with this myself, where I experienced myself kind of getting mad a little bit, at answer especially when I would have to answer the same questions over and over. But I actually took a long walk and thought about it one time, and I was like, you know what? It's really cool that people are asking questions because you guys are reaching out. You know what I mean? We're establishing a connection, and it's the beginnings of of you know interaction of of creating um um like not just not just like a you know, we're not just we're not just faces and names. We're now almost creating a relationship in the sense that we're almost you know building friendships, building acquaintances, and things like that. So it's really cool. It's really awesome. And also, it's really great because I can help you guys answer some questions. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't know the answer to. And I I like it. For me, it's in, very enjoyable to help other people. So. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Strategies. I can see that happening somehow. That's going to, but health already does. Um, you know what? 
I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna add your comment here, Bruns Bear, because it's a really good, really good idea, right? Having having the world doing this a little bit better. I know it already. It already varies the health, but it doesn't vary attack damage or strategy. But those could be done, right? Because I'm using these behavior trees. This could be something that that could that could happen for sure. I know we're not your faces, but I meant like your names. Your names are something I kind of identify with you guys. And then also I see your faces on Twitter. So I do I do know some of your faces. Who's my friend? Question mark, exclamation. <laughs> Let's see if that works. So that if this what does work, what'll happen is that um, the guy will disappear for a second. Yeah, totally, exactly. All right. So I saw that guy's red. Oh, there. What that? What happened there? Ah, see. Oh, yeah. So he left his he left his collision box behind. That was really weird. There. See that guy right there is burrowing. Yeah, it's working. But he's not. He's not disappearing. It's kind of weird. Yeah. What kind of stuff are you coding, Blue? Yeah, I, I do too. I get so mu I learned so much from Stack Overflow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we all learned this in high school, didn't we? Long or any point in our lives. Yeah, it's usually I guess it's more of a college thing, right? You you have like a high school girlfriend or whatever, and then you go to college and you realize that long distance relationships are difficult. Burrow, empty. Unburrow X. Um, we'll see if uh, did I comment those out? No. Yeah, we got animate burrow, animate unburrow. Oh, I think what might be happening is it's not repeating it or something. Let's see what happens when we do behavior animate. Nice, Space Invader, cool. Nice, right on. Cool, man. Well, feel free to share. Um, I always love seeing screenshots of games you guys are working on and stuff. So if you got screenshots or whatever, feel free to share them. Feel free to share a link to your game too if you're, if you're starting to promote it. Ah, this is it. Yeah, the next value is just how much it repeats. So we want to set that to zero. Okay, this is um, anime burrow zero. There, that should make them so they disappear, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, it worked, but then it didn't. Oh, because probably because they're doing a run animation. Hmm. Cool, right on. Well, cool. I can't wait to see, man. I think what needs to happen is if... Yeah, if repeat is zero... Ah, this is it. Yeah, this is what we want. This overridable thing. Huh? What's up, some sort of guy? Sorry, man. I don't got Nightbot or anything. I 
think that's what we want. We want it to be not overridable. So when it runs this animation, there's no way it's going to be overridden by another animation. Uh, it's still still blinking. Set a breakpoint here and figure out what's going on with that. Cool, man. You're working on an old school roguelike. Hello, careful moose. What's up, man? Thank you and welcome to the stream. Sweet, nice, man. Yeah, totally. I love it. It's sort of Game Boy esque, but you've got plenty of colors, so I see what you mean by old school. I like it, man. Sweet. You see, you've got some new, some different slots and stuff, so you're kind of going for that, that uh, lots of cool items in your game type thing. What's up, y'all? Elite SCV, Dracteus. All right, man. See you, Brunsbear. Okay, um, yeah, I'll see if it hits this breakpoint, because I'm wondering if it's even doing this whole render flags, overridable. B. Nice, live GDX, sweet. Yeah, somebody else on here, Brad, BG a little bit. Brad's doing his game in Live GDX too. So we got values. Second value should be a string. Not overridable. Yeah, that should. We should hit this breakpoint, or we should hit this. Yeah. So it's running this animation the way we were intending, but something else must be starting another animation you know what okay I'm gonna simplify all of this cool man you're learning C good for you that's rad that's what I learned with and I highly recommend learning C to anybody else nice yeah that's cool make a roguelike in C totally you can do it man C is a great language and you know the more the the more experience I get in programming, I realize that a lot of C++ is not really even that necessary. C is is totally adequate of a language in itself. Uh, Blue, if you're asking me, yeah, I do. I do think so. I think once you learn one programming language, you kind of have the mostly, you know, most programming languages are similar, definitely in ways. So once you learn one, what I'm saying is you kind of have learned, it's like once you learn English, you kind of have the oh, the basic, um, the basics basically. Yeah, totally, They're right. There's a lot of things that C doesn't have, but you can get by without them, you know, especially if you're a more of a beginner programmer. <laughs> I, love, I love the way you put this. But, but, templates. Seize the language of gods. Yeah, so I want to turn off every single enemy except for one of these guys. So, I want to put on... Um... Hey, thanks for following. I'm going to put, like, only one of these X things. And I'm gonna turn off all the flies 
and all of the water hoppers for a moment. So I can just focus on one of these guys and figure out why he's not doing his other animation. So we'll turn off the hoppers. Turn off the flies. Yeah, Perl definitely is one of those weird languages. <laughs> Last night I drifted off while reading a list book. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Good one. Oh, that's so hilarious. Dude, I gotta save this link. This is so hilarious. Is there, okay, so is there much difference between uh, C, C sharp, and C? There's really there's a lot of there's a lot of core um, similarities. Um, they're actually they're actually you're looking at some of the most similar languages out there. But C plus plus and C sharp add a lot of different features to C, and they're they're both different from each other. So yeah, there are there are some differences, but at the at the heart of them are all they're kind of the same. Have I programmed an assembly briefly? Yeah, when I was much younger. Um, back in the day when assembly was kind of necessary, you know, like in the 90s or whatever, I did a little bit. Yes, yeah, C Sharp and C++ are both built on C. What am I fluent in? Um, C, C++, PHP, um, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, that kind of stuff. You know, I, I pretty much can figure out C Sharp and Java and Python. So can you use some C in C Sharp and C++? I don't know about C Sharp because I'm not as familiar with it, but um, I know in C, yes, in C++, all of C++ is based on C. So basically everything you do in C, this if false right here is C. Even though I'm I'm using C++, this is entirely based on C. Okay, let's see if that did it. I just want to want I want one of these guys on the screen so I can debug it easier. Oh, we still have a butterfly. So I'll turn off that butterfly and the the crow. But here's the butterfly. Here's the crow. Wilk, I've heard of this guy Wilk. Oh, there's still a frog. Let's turn off the frogs. There's a lot of turning off going on here. Yo, thanks for following. Okay, so now I can pay attention in the system Every 
every time we call K behavior animate, we can look at it and see um, see what's going on. Why it isn't isn't turning or staying um, invisible. Okay, here's the first breakpoint. Here's, we're hitting this second breakpoint. Unburrow. Okay, it's already unburrowing. I guess I could just watch it instead of. I can watch what sequence is actually running. So we got choose, seek, burrow. Wander, unburrow. Why'd you leave, man? Come back. Bro. It's so weird. Why does it... Uh. Something is calling an animation for it. Something is overriding. I wonder if I, if I set this... Like if we did this, stir val zero equals burrow. That would be the only animation it can run, and so that would that would kind of weed out. Oh, see, it does run. Oh, I see what's going on. Yeah, it is this thing's fault. I think what it is is this, like it should be if repeat equals it's greater than zero, then we do it this way. Otherwise, we don't need to run the idle at all. Call this key. We call this idle. Hmm. Yeah, we're only using that once. Leave that there, and then call this one key as well. I think that'll do it. Hopefully, I just want the guy to stay invisible, which means he's staying on the last frame of his animation, and then he becomes visible again by starting up his animation again. Yeah, nice. There we go. Cool, he's unburrowed. Nice, all right. Good, 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 good. So we can go delete this breakpoint. We can turn off drawing debug. So we can kind of play around with this guy. Success! Oh! Success and the system is better than it was. So we should be able to like run around and not get hit by it. Yeah, he's cool. One of the bugs on my list is this very bug right here where an enemy gets off the screen and you can't see him. They should an enemy should never be able to walk off the screen. That's Whoa, whoa.
what what happened? Where'd you go, man? I'm not gonna hurt you, I promise. Oh, that's weird. I think I need to turn back on debug and figure out what was going on there. Might be something to do with its state. Oh. Oh, so it did stuck before it did unburrow. So that's easy to fix. I need to make unburrow a priority, right? If this guy ever hits timer end, that's way more important than hitting stuck or choose or whatever. Let's see if that works. Where'd you go? Yeah, it looks like he's getting stuck there in unburrow. Okay, this I need to make this unburrow smarter. So it should be like this. If timer end, if category none. In fact, that should be before that. Then unburrow. So let's add a, a word there into um, the system for if. So we can uh, we can check the category uh, you should not be able to attack the last unburrow point I'll try that though that's a good question yeah I'll check that um, but you shouldn't be able to because this category is zero nothing and the way the attacks work is it's actually you swing your sword and then it checks if there's anything inside the the melee attack box that matches what you can melee attack. So it has to match the category foe for you able to be able to hit it. So it shouldn't work. It shouldn't be a problem. What's up, Slow Excellence? That's a cool name, by the way. I don't know if I've told you that already, but I like that. Slow Excellence. I personally believe excellence is a slow thing. It takes a long time to build it up. So, all right, if category is dot 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 we got if category e dot collision dot category equals We need to parse out this mask, basically. Oh, uh, sure, man. If you have a, a spare key, of course. Yeah, you can email it to me. Cheers, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we were just we were we were just talking about Dark Souls yesterday on the stream. So, um, Nat, it's I'm just Nat at WizardFood.com. So. Sweet man, yeah, definitely. If you've got that, I ain't gonna say no. Sweet, cheers, man. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. I was just looking at their videos for it, and I just added it to my um, 
to my uh, my wish list this morning. Sweet, yeah, okay, that's the that's the um that's the Steam one, right? Or the what's the difference? Is there an old one versus DS DS one? Is there a big difference between them, or is it just nice? Oh, cool! So you already had it, and you got it on your bundle. Man, that's awesome! Thanks for thinking of me. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry about that, Asnerus. I, I missed it. Can it swim when it doesn't have a collision mask? Um, it's still, okay, Asnerus, it still has its collision mask. It just doesn't have its collision categories. That's what, that's kind of the beauty of it all, is it, it's still, it can't, it can't, it can't burrow underneath rocks. It can't burrow underneath water. It still is completely co colliding in, in its math, but it just isn't recognized as a category, so... Nothing can hit it, so it's pretty cool. DS fix. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Ah, sweet. Yeah, that's the one I wanted to play. Dark Souls one. DS fix. All right, so if the sub type two equals K behavior none, then return e dot collision dot category equals K filter none. Otherwise, return collision to category equals Closure component, parse, mask, stir val. I think it's going to be zero. Let's check all this. I'm going to set that breakpoint here. Make sure this works. So this is in, this is to make the the unburrow smarter. So it never tries to unburrow if it's already unburrowed. All right, so we've got this first check. Subtype two is none. I believe that is none. Yeah, return equals none. Yeah, and that's always going to be that check. So let's just do. Let's. I want to modify the behavior and make sure the opposite of this type of behavior works. Yo, bullseye pie. What's up, man? How's it going? How's your game going, man? You got you got any more sales on Steam or you working on a new game? What's up? Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, everything's going great, man. Super awesome. Yep. I made like this is like the fourth enemy I made this week. So, making a lot of progress on enemies. And the overworld for the game is a lot more interesting too, so that's pretty cool. So this would be the opposite of category foe. So it's not going to be behavior none. And then we'll step into this parse mask function. Oh, I, pa oh, I got the wrong value it's going to be parse flags it's going to return zero but it should have been stir val one never seem to know which one of these to use there okay that should that should fix that and we can go back to the behavior and set it how it should be bullseye pie what's the link to your game again Ah, okay. 
Part-time job, yeah. I hear ya. Cool, you're back in business? Sweet. Awesome, man. I love your graphics. I love this, this foreground element right here. Super cool. No booze revenge, right? That's what it's called. Everybody's, um, you guys should check out. What's this link here? What's up, a, a dick guy? Why are you posting this link here? Here it is, Nobu. Yeah, this is um, this is Bullseye Pie's game, you guys. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I think it's awesome. It's cool how it tilts. It's like a really, the world will tilt. Okay, let's see if that worked to make it so um, it uh. He burrows correctly, so he should go burrow, unburrow, burrow, unburrow, cool. Yeah, it looks like he's working now. Yeah, nice. Now we can start drawing this guy. Oh, no worries, man. I, I love to promote your guys' games. Everybody that's making games, and I'm love, I love to... Be interested and watch your guys' games, cause yeah, really, I, your your art is awesome, man, and the game is really cool. Cool, good for you, good for you, man. Okay, yeah, it's time to start some art. Yeah, I do. I have Windows on this machine. I can I can dual boot into Windows. So yeah, I'll definitely try it. I'll, I'll remember that. I'll try to play it in um, in Windows, not Mac. Thanks. Okay. So um, I started off the stream saying basically, feel free to shout out ideas visually for this for um for this guy. He's a burrowing enemy. So um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start drawing him now, and I'm I'm still kind of undecided on what to do. I was gonna draw some kind of um, this weird idea for a for almost an insect like thing that had a drill for a body and had these weird spindly legs, and so he could dr he could burrow up underneath uh, from underground, and then. Um, and then you can walk around on legs. A mole, right? Yeah. Hello, little rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's changed a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. Since um, wow, yeah, it's been a minute. Um, yeah, lots has improved for sure. Definitely on. Definitely getting a lot closer to um being closer to a finished game, but still six months left. Yeah. There's a lot done for sure. In fact, I'll I'll show you really quick. Let me turn back on all this other stuff in area. For anybody else that just joined the stream, also this would be good so you guys can get a like if you're if you're new to all this, you can see what this game is about. So the concept is, it's like Zelda 1, but it's procedurally generated. Oh, I need to turn off uh, the debug drawing. Yeah, so you enter, when you start this game, you enter six letters, and that gives you a world based on those six letters. So it procedurally generates the entire world based on that. And so these little gray guys right here, these gray squares are new enemies I'm creating, but... um. Looks like it's putting a lot of them. Oh, oh, hold on. It's putting every single kind of enemy in the entire world. 
is one of those. So we need to turn that off. Yeah, so hopefully I can, I can, we can come across some new some of these new enemies that got created. Yeah, here's some of these little drolly guys. These guys are quick little guys that shoot like rocks at you. Um, and they're when you get near them, they run away. They're like super scared of you. So they're kind of their own behavior. They're actually quick enough that yeah, you can barely even catch up to them. Um, what's new? What else is new? I don't know if you've even seen the cactus. The cactus is great. The cactus allows you to, um, see secret walls and stuff. So you eat the cactus, you get these psychedelic powers, and it reveals secret walls. And you, you get tripped out for a minute. See if we can find some more new enemies. Those are, there's the gray square guy. Or we can find a dungeon. There's a lot of new there's lots of new stuff in the dungeons. Man, it's really favoring these new guys, which I haven't even finished, so. Yeah, it's like every single screen is still the new guy. Let's run towards a level. There might be one down. Let's see, Let's, maybe there's something up here too, though. Well, I definitely need to work on this. This is I need to work on placement of enemies. Because right now it, it just randomly places enemies based on what it determines is the difficulty of that path. So that's not the, always the best way to do it. Really, um, like these. New guys should be on a certain type of screen, and the other guys should be on a different type of screen. <clears throat> the cherry is in the pudding. Maybe like an ant lion larva? Oh. Whoa. These guys are gnarly. That's a good idea. That could work. I like that because this guy's meant to be to walk around, right? I love the idea of him being like a sand snake coming out of the ground, but um, the sand snake doesn't move, right? The sand snake comes out of the ground and just sits there. So I want this guy to be able to come out of the ground, move around while he's above ground. So that could work. In fact, let's I'll start drawing him like that. Let's do this. This will be kind of an ant lion larva inspired enemy. Cool. Thanks, Bobier. All right. So Get kind of a brownish hue to start with. Tan. Mm, that's not bad.
What's up, Party One Animal? Nice name. I'm making a video game. It's called Songbringer. It's a full-length video game. Um, it's a. Uh, it's like Zelda One. Basically, I'm basically I'm making a game like Zelda One that's procedurally generated. Sand pit traps? Whoa! Yeah, this is kind of the perfect enemy. Good idea, Momir. These guys are gnarly looking, right? Ah! Uh, if you're an ant, oh, I get it. I get why they call it an ant lion. All right. It's cool, like armored plating almost. Little beady eyes. Really, they fling sand at them? Crazy. These guys are really interesting. I'm glad to be making an enemy so... So insects are crazy interesting, right? Okay, there. I'm I've just kind of got a blob shape to start with so we can see if this is even about the right size. <laughs> That's right. That's right you are. You're the opposite of a troll. All you guys are opposites of trolls. Thank you. I have been trolled like crazy on this stream a few times. Some of you that some of you were probably even there during the, one of the most crazy, uh, weird zombie troll incidents. This guy kept coming back with different names, and he was such an asshole. Oh my god. And then I, I was trolled this other time where somebody like gave me some link and I clicked on it and it was like this screaming troll and it was so loud and it not only hurt my ears but everyone else's ears too. Okay, so we're gonna call this, this just X for now. We'll call it, this will be its idle animation. X idle. Yeah, that was definitely a weird, weird day for sure. But thankfully, a lot of you guys were in here to help defend me for a moment. And then I realized this guy is just such a dick. So we banned him. He came back again. Banned him. Came back again with a different name. Banned him. Oh, man. It was horrible. So I just started with this like blobish outline to get a sense of proportion once again. First of all, what the heck? Yo, what's up, Nano? We're making this burrowing enemy right now. Yeah, burrow, unburrow, there. What's up, man? All right, let's see if this is looking better. Also, one thing I want to check is also the, about the color, right? So the color brightness is something to first look at. Oh, this is a different enemy. Okay, I need to go. I just saw the frog actually doing his, his eat a fly thing right there, so that's working. Okay, so I need to force the world to be this guy for now so while we're writing him. And so, yeah, you guys that are watching this stream, 
feel free to shout out names, right? I'm leaving the name open. You guys can, you know, think if you think of a cool name this guy should be named, please share. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely too bright. Oh, and it's facing the wrong direction. Okay, so it needs to be less bright. We need to face um, east. Oh, less bright. Okay, so. Forty nine. Let's take it down to forty. Maybe thirty five. Uh, thirty nine. Thanks, party animal. Cheers, man. Yeah, I've been making this game for about eight months now, so, and there's still about six months left, so there's a lot of work left to do. There's a lot more enemies, more bosses, a lot more art to be created. There's also more items and a story, too. I'm also, there's going to be dialogue, so those are the main elements I need to create over the next, actually more like five months now. Yeah, there's only really five months left. But I'm also going to release a ton of free updates. So this is not the end. At one, like I'll probably release it in January, but there'll still be tons of updates after that. And a lot of it will be fr just free content. There's no download. There'll never be any downloadable content or in-app purchases. At least I don't have any plans for that at this point. I just want it all to be free. Because I have a lot of, I have a lot of, lot of stuff that's left to do for this game, but... I won't quite have time to do it by December. A lot of ideas that you guys have shared over time. <laughs> That's right. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is your top down. Oh, sweet. So that's a toilet. Right on. <laughs> Tappy. Yeah, I'm trying to, I can, I can do an enemy a day, but I could do more like a boss every three days and an item is going to, each item might take two days. Does this enemy appear on a sandy beach only? That's a good question. I don't know. It certainly would be more appropriate if they, if he did only appear on sand and beaches. Uh, Hengad, what languages can I code? Um, I just answered that a, a, a little bit ago, but yeah, C++ is my favorite language. C, of course. I know Objective-C, I know PHP, I know a lot of C-based languages. Okay, this is still a bit too light. Why is it so light, even though it seems so dark? Anyways, we'll take down the brightness again. Maybe ne negative 15 or so. Oh yeah, I saw that on um, I saw that on Steam's page. How's that going? What's uh, what's the word? So I'm still looking at, at colors right now. That's a little bit better. Maybe even a little bit lighter than that. Six. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, six million. Dang! Six million dollars for Dota Championships? Sandling. Hmm. All oh, right, six million per team. Did I not export? I thought I did. Oh. 
Scare beater beetle, yeah. Learn so someone suggested to learn C sharp. Here's my suggestion. My suggestion is to go pick a game engine for it. Well, wait, 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 first of all, why why are you learning C C plus plus C sharp? Why are you learning to program? Answer me that first, and then I and then I can give you some better advice. Yeah, eSport for sure. Yeah, this was a little too dark. Let's just go negative five. Game development. All right, cool. So you want to start with game development and 2D games? Good for you. That's awesome. So first of all, you've you've clarified what you really want to do with your programming. That's that's um, that's the first step. Most some people don't really some people don't admit that or they're not honest about it, right? Some people say, "Oh, I want to learn to program." So, but they really want to make games, but they say, "Oh, I want to learn web development or I want to learn C++ so I can do business software." When they don't really. So good for you. Um, but I would say first of all, go play with game engines before you learn programming. So I would go, I would go try out Unity, um, Unreal. So at least check out those two, uh, Unity and Unreal, and check out two or three more game engines, and play play with the game engines until you find one that you're you start to get attracted to. That you're like you resonate with. You're like, man, this one's awesome. I like this one. And then from there, you can pick a language. So if Unity appeals to you, you're gonna want to learn C Sharp. If Unreal appeals to you, you're gonna want to start with C plus plus. And either way you go, you can learn C, which is the root of both of those languages. So if maybe if you can't make up your mind, just learn C. It's a great thing. I learned C at first, and it taught me almost everything I needed to know about programming. Because C teaches you memory, addressing, pointers. Those things are incredibly important to know. So... Yeah, that's really great, Elite SCV. Yeah, stick to C for sure. It's worthwhile. It's a very, very worthwhile language, and it's it's kind of it's kind of the foundational elements of pretty much every every type. Every, it's the foundation of all programming. You're going to learn most of it with C. So, and most languages are sort of C-like these days. You know, Java kind of looks like C. C sharp looks like C. C plus plus looks like C because it is. Um, Objective-C kind of looks like C sometimes, you know, you get the point. Okay, all right, it's time to start drawing this guy. And you were saying also to look at Scarab Beetles? Tappy, was it Scarab Beetle you said? They're the black ones, right? Oh, these are the guys that can be colored, right? Scaribidae. Cool. I'm kind of liking this this whole antlion though. This antlion is super. Whoa! Look how hairy that one is. Oh, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Jamaican Tony, what's up? Yeah. Well, C plus plus is definitely one of the king languages out there, but. It, it also, it really depends on what game engine you're going to be using, in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm going to stick to my guns and say that what I would, I would first, I would first go with a game engine before you, before you decide what language to learn. If you can't, if you, after you've played with some game engines, if you can't decide, I would, yeah, if personally, I would stick with C++. That's my... That's what I would do, because C Sharp, I just, I don't know. C++ is more portable. C++ can be compiled on way more platforms, um, and C++ is faster. C++ equals two. <laughs> nice.
<laughs> there you go. This is code. This works right here. Jamaica Tony. Nice one. I like that. Forever. C++. All right, all right. Let's draw this. Okay, we got a, this antlion type thing. These guys can be thicker from what, I've, what I'm seeing here. Yeah, let's make them a little thicker. All right, let's give them some shading. X equals plus C, X, X. Yeah, it's true. C sharp is actually a higher level language than C plus plus, slightly. And um, so that, that's what makes it a bit easier to use. But C, it's like, I think of it like this, C plus plus, is like a manual shift car, right? C sharp is more like an automatic car. Java also is an automatic transmission car. It's just way easier to drive an automatic transmission car, but the advantages of driving a manual shift car are, are many. Like for example, you can you can shift into neutral when you're hitting a grab a piece of gravel in a manual shift car. You can't really do that while you're in an automatic car unless I'm unless I'm thinking of different kind of automatic cars, but the, the, I hope that example kind of <laughs> Yo, what's up, novice? Good, yeah, well if you like C++, that's a good sign you should stick with it <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? I'm plugging in my phone Oh, there's ant lines in Terraria? Oh, this is how they do it? It's like... Yeah, side-scroller, this this kind of art position is um, a little different. Oh, there you showed me that video of him coming out of the ground. Where did that go? Whoa. Okay. Okay, I can kind of get a picture for what this guy's going to look like coming out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh man, I would not want to be an ant in a in an ant lion pit like this. Oh, I can't get out. I can't. Whoa, he's super fast. You can't even see him. He's a blur. Oh, one thirty six. Damn, nature, you are scary. Dude, there are some scary things out there for sure. Yeah, what's up, QLav? Whoa, you have a pet tarantula and an antlion is scary to you? Whoa. Hello, Mr. Widmer. Yeah, that's right. We got plenty of ants at our place. We need an ant lion around here. Okay, so I'm thinking this guy is going to be kind of horizontal like this when he's moving east-west, and then I can get like a vertical one too. I'm thinking he'll turn vertical and then go into the ground vertically like that other guy did just now. Particles when it burrows. Good question. 
I'm definitely going to put some particles into this animation because he's, he's also going to have like a, like a, like when you, when you think of a mole going underground, they all have, they have that, that bit of ground. I'm thinking it'll be kind of like that. So, okay. So I'm going to start by drawing him above ground. Oh yeah, uh, what I was saying was um, I'll probably do that with the pixel art, with the actual animation. But that might be a good thing to add later, is to actually add some particles as well. So, so I guess the answer is yes, but it'll be here part of this this actual animation. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I've, I, there might be an item at some point which allows you to control enemies. So yeah, you might actually be able to create pets. <laughs> Antlion pet. You're too scary. You're way too scary. It should dance. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. What's up, Hazard? I, actually, I'm going to write that down. That's a great idea. Just dancing enemies. How much will the game be? It's probably going to be about 15, 16 bucks, something like that. Do I have any suggestions for building your C skills? Yeah, of course. Um, you understand the language, but you're having a hard time crossing that bridge of real world implementation. Oh, right. Well, um, Okay, what what do you want to use it for? Why why are you learning? Why do you want to build your C skills?
Hey, thanks for following. Because you lose it a lot in apps and jailbreak tweaks and you want to get into kernel development. Okay. All right. Well, um, personally, I would recommend doing some simple exercises, kind of like stuff you would do in school, like create um, or tutorials. Like if you want to go and like do some kind of like C tutorial, you know what I mean? Start with any... Yeah, or maybe you know what? I would maybe reread a C book too. Like you 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 sound like you already understand C's. So that's cool. But have you ever actually read learn C learn C the hard way? Like I would I would read through this cuz I bet you there's some stuff in the, I haven't read this book myself, but I bet there's some stuff in here with some simple exercises, right? That's really what you want to do is some exercises. Like since you don't really have an actual task you want you you want to do right now just yet start with some exercises like simple things like like in school we did a lot of different like um exercises on that stuff um i can't really remember it but you know oh that book is how you learned oh hmm yeah, that might help, right? Subscribe me to the kernel mail list. Or you know what I would do? Start start taking apart other people's C code. So you're interested in the Linux kernel, go find p that part of the kernel that you're interested in, right? Like, I don't know, whatever whatever part of it is, is you're interested in and start, start taking that C code apart a little bit and learning how it works. You know, we're just, first of all, just read it kind of get a good uh, like a, a feeling for how it works and then I don't know yeah play with it Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I hope that helps. And I would maybe try and search for exercises too. Like, look for, I don't know, C challenges? Is there like, or C exercises? Here we go, here's C exercises and solutions. Here you go. Here's one. Write a C program to print the following line shown below. That's like like a super easy one. Write five statements by using printf function to print the asterisk pattern. Cool. Let's see how how much how difficult this gets. Write a C program to prompt the user for input three integer values and print those values in a forward and reverse order. Yeah, this kind of stuff is going to teach you for sure. Ah, it's also got links and stuff too. Yeah, thanks, a clone geek. Here's some good link, some good links. Nice. And here's that link that I I just found too. Yeah, you got that one. Number one's done. Bam. Nana, what is kernel dev? Kernel is the thing in Linux that, um, and also in Mac that um, 
it's the it's the primary bit of code that runs the operating system. I guess that's the simplest way I could put it. Yeah. Leak code. Hey, thanks for following everybody. Yeah, cool. Nice suggestions. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm making here today is this burrowing enemy. It's kind of like inspired by an antlion. He's looking exactly like an antlion at this point. Well, not exactly, but I haven't done anything to change him from being sort of a default antlion-ish thing yet. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking it too. Yeah. Kernel dev, that's cool, man. Good for you. Okay, I'm gonna try a hue shift here. So if this is gonna shift through the darker hues, it's gonna get more red as it gets into its shadow. So thank you again, Tappy. It's how popcorn is developed. <laughs> Popcorn is just a bunch of zeros and ones covered in sweet, sweet toffee. Sounds delicious. Oh, that totally worked. Oh, yeah. Nice. What's this hue? I like this hue. Man, your rule of thumb, Tappy, totally works. Just shift it through the darker hues. Yeah, it makes this this character immediately more visually interesting too. To add this this different hue. All right. Print a pyramid like the stairs at the end of a game of Mario Bros using pound signs. Nice. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. Yep. If anybody's just following along, you're kind of learning how to make art. This is, uh, Tappy shared this with me on the last stream where um, if you have a hue, like let's say you have yellow, and you want it to, and you go into the more of the shadow of that hue, you want to shift through the darker, if you want to get a different hue, you can shift through the darker hues. So like yellow, green, cyan, these are nice light hues. I never really noticed that until Tappy mentioned it, that these are the light hues and these other things are darker hues. Dark blue is one of the darkest hues. This purple through red is, is kind of dark too. So you're going to shift through the dark hues. So I was wondering like, okay, which way do I shift? If, if I'm at yellow, do I shift through green or do I shift through red? You, you want to shift through red if you're going down into the shadows because it's just a darker hue. So it's just, it totally makes sense. Is it? Is it really just only scanf? Are you sure? Is there something else? I like this because this is the first language I ever learned. Um, Oh yeah, Getsy. Yeah, you got alternatives. Here you go, man. Check this out. You've got Getsy, FGetS, but I would use Getsy. That gets you a character at a time. But let me. There's a better answer than that. C's bad functions versus their good alternatives.
That's not really giving you the scanf alternative though. Yeah, f get s is really really the recommended thing here. So here's that link. Yeah, thanks, the clone geek. No, but you can use standard in on f get s. So you're gonna use s standard in. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know I'm exactly sure how you get standard in. Here, yeah, this is just a capital standard in. This link has it right here. No, no, it does not. Yeah, professional novice. Check out this answer right here. You want to use fgets standard in, and that, that is there's no need to create a file or read from a file. You're reading from a file handle called standard in, which is just the input from the the user. And then standard out is your is your standard printf. So you could you could f put s to standard out, and it would be the same thing as f printf. Oh no, the U.S. team's losing. No, this is the Dota Championships. Okay, I gotta. I want to see how this guy is looking. Getting pretty distracted here. Like, is he? Does he? Does he need more colors? I mean, he is kind of meant to be camouflaged with the ground. Yeah, there you go. All right, Elise SCB. Good night, man. So let's see how this is looking so far. Yeah, I'm probably gonna need to take a break here soon too. I feel that hunger building. Oh yeah, oh, cool. These are looking pretty interesting actually. Let's get him to turn around though. Is he, is he gonna turn? Come on dude, turn. Go west. You know you want to. Go out west, California's there. Why does he, why does he, only, oh, there, okay, yeah, he can turn around, that's all I wanted to see, there, he burrowed, okay, so let's work on a burrowing animation next, sorry, what for, no worries, no worries, yeah, it's definitely the right, all I really wanted to see was, okay, are these colors looking good, is the shadow, is the shading, or the hue, or all that, so it is, it's looking great, um, he doesn't really have an idle animation yet, or a run, Okay, actually a run animation would be best to do next, so that's really easy. Oh, and also he should be one more pixel down, so there. Hey, what's up Mr. Widmer? Trello, really, should I? I don't know. Does it re would it save me time overall, though? I've seen that thing. Trello does look really good. I, I'm not. I'm not knocking it in a sense. All I'm really wondering is: is this really gonna save me any time? I guess it probably would, right? I would. I would be able to prioritize them all. Prioritizing actually would really help. Let me look at Trello once more. Because I do, I do have way too many things on the ideas list and the, and the bugs list. These are bugs up the top, and then all these are ideas. So yeah, prioritizing would be good, right? Oh, and I can have part of it open for the public. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, I, I think this is probably would be, a really f helpful right there to prioritize. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, people could submit bugs too, right? Bugs and to list all the cards. Cool. Oh, this this one I haven't checked out. I saw another one that was that was recommended, but it wasn't Trello. I, I I'll check this out later. <clears throat> Good suggestion. Yeah, workflowy.
Nice. Yeah, right, right. But yeah, once it's in there, then it's prioritized and also people can interact with it and stuff. That's cool. What's the name of the hero in this game? Uh, it's Rock with a Q. Yeah. Rock Epimetheos. Epimetheos. Okay, yeah, let's get this guy walking. So I'm going to save this as xwalk. Just duplicate this frame. I think this might be as easy as a two frame walk. Oh, GitLab? Oh, it's like almost like Pinterest. My girl uses Pinterest all the time and I sneak onto it to find stuff to buy her. It's great. Hmm. I really like this is that this is interactive. That's pretty cool. You guys can see stuff that's on the list. To do. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last name came from Brad. It was a suggestion from one of the guys here on the stream, Brad. He suggested the name Epimetheus because you grab this sword at the very beginning of the game that awakens this ancient evil army. So you're kind of uh, an act first, think later type of that hero or rock is that kind of hero I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, Hazard. That's a good, really good point. Yeah, I actually I should write that on the uh, the list too. Is um make rock's hair or hat a different color? For sure, I I definitely agree there. Hmm, or, or add goggles. Hmm. I wonder if that would be enough to add goggles. I don't know. <laughs> right, Pinterest. How much do you bench? How much do you spell? I don't know how much I bench. I haven't benched anything since high school. That was like 20 years ago. How much do I spell? All the time, man. I'm a wizard. Bam. Okay, so I'm thinking if this guy just moves all of his legs one... I don't know if that'll look right though. We'll see. It'll probably look cheesy to have them moving exactly. What's going on? Why didn't it move? Frame zero, frame one. Let's try it again. Yeah, see that kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. I want a few more frames to try some other ones. Oh, 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 I get it now. I get it now. Good joke, though. How much should I bench? Hmm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and guess. I could probably bench my body weight. Is that right? I, f I forget how much I ever benched in high school. Yeah, so I'm gonna slow. I'm gonna move these legs a little bit differently in this frame. 
So we create some more variety in this walk. It, doesn't look, it won't look so robotic. A drider style enemy? What's that? Is it like a, a spider mixed with a... What's a drider? Is that is that a Zelda enemy? Whoa, whoa! So it's like a... Is this it right here? Like a spider with a sort of humanoid body? <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, good call, right? I gotta move his shell too. Yeah, uh, I wanna try first moving his legs a little bit differently. I can see him, yeah, I can see him hopping a little bit, like one pixel. Oh yeah, good call. Chomping too, good. Okay, so I'm gonna move these feet. You, you think you'd rather have no animation at all? Zero, one, two. Okay, let's see what he looks like if he, he does shift up a pixel too. I think this might look a little bit weird. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see what this looks like in the game. All right, cool. We got idle. Let's do a run. Nom 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 nom. You wish you got subbed more. You you have a stream? Oh yeah. Yeah, it does work if he if he hops up a pixel, but I'd like to see the animation a little bit more, um, like not quite so, a little more more frames basically. <laughs> it it kind of does look cute actually. I admit, I can see the cuteness. Uh, Takio Nutty, what's up, man? The name of this game is Songbringer. Songbringer. It's coming out on Steam in about six months. <laughs> I'll call him Snugglebug. He'll be my squishy guy. We go to bed together. Um, yeah, I did do that study one time. Actually, I got recommended a great article. Actually, it was about um, not. Disney, but it was um, uh, it was a study on all the the blurring techniques and everything in Street Fighter. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I don't think any of these are it. But it was such a great article. It taught me a lot about blurring and doing things that are faster, you know, than some of the, a lot of these animations I don't really need though, or I don't, I don't really need to use some of these techniques, but yeah.
squash and stretch. These are these are. It's crazy how good those can work, especially in animation, because you're only seeing it for like a tenth of a second or whatever. Yeah, this is kind of more of a boss enemy, but yeah. Yeah, red eyes would definitely make it less cute. What's it going to cost? It's probably going to be about 15 or 16 bucks, and that's going to include the soundtrack. Um, so yeah, it's coming out on Steam first, um, and it's it's just like it's like Zelda, but it's procedurally generated. So you can you can actually play three hundred million different worlds, and it's true procedural generation. It's not like it randomly arranges rooms or anything. So so yeah, I'm gonna need to get going pretty soon. Actually, you guys, I'm getting kind of hungry. But if you guys got any ideas for names for this guy, feel free to shout them out and. Um, but I will be on for like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like another five minutes and complete this walking animation here. So, but yeah, feel free to shout out any kind of what you think this guy should be named. And uh, if we can come up with a cool one, then we'll, we'll just call it that. Tony, <laughs> Drig, that's kind of cool. Drowder, Drowder. Good, good suggestions. Janet, <laughs> Drorg, Takio, Tasi, is it Takio or Tasio? Two, Fluffy, Fluffy, <laughs> Broger, Sam. Uh. I think this is a little bit better with having the um, Search Run Be the Magnificent. Man, these are some great ones. Takio, like with a K. Rar. Boo. Okay, let's see how he's looking now. So what are, the next animations I'm going to do are to be... Um, Mr. Peanut Butter? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I like the regularity at which he's moving at this point. Warg? Sharg? Mrs. Cuddles? <laughs> Straight up Bob. Janine, like my ex-girlfriend? <laughs> uh... This is the best, this is the best ever. I think it needs one more frame to make it a little more. Peanut? It's the hash bringing, mash bringing, hash bringing slasher. That sounds like really hip hop. Mash bringing, ba 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 ba. The Savort. Sport. Jankisha. Chinchi. 
<laughs> How about Burler? <laughs> what do you say? Learn, learn not, lean not, green digging machine. Saddam. Yeah, I know it does look a tiny bit weird, right? That's what I was trying to. I'm trying to get it to be a little less. If yeah, I might actually take that out, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, chinche, chinche. It's bed bug. Ah. Oh well, no wonder this. Oh, this was all the wrong number of frames. So let's see if it works. It looks better this time. Now it'll have seven frames. Sand mole. I wonder why he disappeared right there. That was weird. I guess he. Oh, he charged me. Yeah, I think it looks it looks more natural now. Leonard Rignerb Hark Fruce. You can proceed to generate his name. Warub. That's kinda cool actually. Or Skarog. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I like Warum. I like I like these. I like a lot of these actually. Dold means hidden in Swedish. That's cool. Hello, Saint Joey. Just name him Foo. Yeah, Spikes. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm thinking I'm, I'm actually gonna draw him actually vertical though. I'll draw him so he's got a north and a south animation as well. So um, just to, to kind of like show you guys what I'm gonna do later on tonight, I'm gonna make him do a, a burrowing animation where he kind of gets vertical and then he'll burrow into the ground and there'll be particles and stuff coming off and there'll be a little bit of ground movement. So you can see kind of the direction that he's going off when he burrows. Um, and I'll do a north walking animation, a south walking animation, so that you can kind of, so that he looks a lot better as far as, um, yeah, because it does look really weird when he's walking north, because he's such a, he's such a horizontal character at this point. Donald Trump. <laughs> La Cucaracha, that, that kind of works, right? Frist. Man, so many good names. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a tough time deciding at this point. Mudman. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do later on tonight. I'm gonna basically just finish this guy up, do his more of his animations and stuff like that. But for now, I kind of got to get some dinner. So, um, so yeah. Man, thank you guys for all all your help today. This has been a really fun, good stream. Um, lots of great suggestions. Um, so there'll be probably like more like four or five of these guys on one screen. They'll burrow underground. You won't know where they're going. They'll, I'll, I'll work on their, on his looks too, make him look a little more spiky. Um, maybe I'll, I'll try playing with some color in his eyes or something like that. So he might look a, more, a little more scary. We'll, we'll see. But, um, other than that, this is a good start to this guy. The, the war up or the, the dingle. <laughs> Oh, he must be burrowed right now. Yeah, he was burrowed. That's why I couldn't hit him. So, yeah. All right, you got Skitter. That's another good one. Yeah, yeah. Once again, you guys, thank you for, um, thanks for watching. Um, hope you had a good time, and uh, we'll catch you next time. So, uh, anybody that's new to this stream, I stream daily around in the afternoon, usually around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, sometimes we're like five, sometimes we're like two or three. So the best way, if you want to follow me, just um, just follow me. That's the best way to get a, 
to uh, see when I go online. Yeah, yeah, I have a I have a website. Um, it's hosted by uh, Tumblr, so it's just songbringer.com. Yeah, cheers, you guys.